Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of Salt Plays Sunless Sea. Um, just really quickly, one of my roommates, housemates, is doing um, dishes right now, and my place I record is off my kitchen, so if you can hear water noises and clanking, uh, that's that. Um, and then... Really quickly, let me go over um, what we're looking for right now. Um, the na sigil ridden navigator wants us to bring two live specimens to the Chapel of Lights. We have um, the Fathom King wants some stuff for our father's bones plot. Uh, something from Mount Nomad or the Tree of Ages, a weapon or engine, an officer, eldest's end, and fruit of the eternal tree. Um, the Clattery Heir also wants a live specimen to continue her story. The Nacris Outcast wants something. I might have, um, gotten as much as I could. Yes. Oh, I have secrets. I have three secrets? Okay. Just a second. Let me read this. Okay. The Nakers Outcast. I think I'm done with. I just forgot to cross part of that off. Um, the Admiralty wants us to go to the Cumaean Canal. Um, I would like to go to the very end of Frostfound. Um, and the Venturer... The, Ventur the Venturer's Desire either wants um, one colossal fluke core or seven lamentable relics and um, the people at Saviors of Rock want three tomb colonists. Um, I'm... Well, first I'm gonna take care of these. Uh, I made that too high. I'm gonna take care of these secrets. You know... I am here. I can do some iron improving without being injured too badly. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't get any sort of injury from that. Fascinating. Okay. Um... I don't believe... Well, let me see what the Rose Market wants. Watchful Curios and a Soothing Copper Long Box. Okay. Um, I'm still mostly trying to save up for the next ship, ship which I believe is 6,000 Echoes. Yes. Um, what do I have in my hold? I have Sintelac and Zoop. Interesting. Okay. I don't have written down that I need any of these things, so I'm going to assume that I can sell them. Um, that might be, I might regret um, this assumption, but we'll find out later. Because I'd rather have a uh, cargo space. Um, have I turned in all of my... Ooh, okay. Looks like there's a lot of things that I... Oh yeah, I was super tired last time I recorded. Lots of things that I missed doing. Um, this feels very silly to be doing at the beginning of things, but it is what it is. Okay, cool. Um, I have even more money than I thought I did. Okay. Um... I think, since the Admiralty wants me to go to the Cumaean Canal, I think I'm going to go south today. And I haven't ever gone all the way south, so I think I'm going to go all the way south today. Um, oh yeah, I should actually buy a more fuel and... And yes, I know, I'm, like, buying fuel with the immediate intention of going to past the Iron Republic where I could get fuel cheaper. I'm not that concerned about it. Um, I'll be fine.
Yes, it sure is. Um, I'm just going to gather a port report. Okay. I, uh, it's been a while since I've been to Quaker's Haven, so let's read this. Quaker's Haven, under new management. Sleek ships are docked in the harbor. Installations of heavy artillery line the shore. The banners of the Eagle Clan, yellow as honey, drape from each roof. Mutton Island has fallen. Uh, we're going to gather a port report, lower the lifeboat, and row to one of the less slippery, less sheer cliffs. Pray you don't get caught. We have a 73% chance of success. Enemy movements. You scale the cliff and crouch in the mud. Through a spyglass, you observe the soldiers' movements. A contingent approaches the charred remains of the cock and magpie, escorting ragged islanders. A woman in feathered epaulets sits at a table within, smiling at Z-charts and scowling at decrees stamped by the leopard clan. Once inside, the islanders fall to their knees before her. Their proud face, their proud faces strain as they address her. We succeeded. We got a port report. I don't think we get any shops here now. Yep. And there's not really a point in trying to dock. Or trying to actually go in. On to the Cumaean Canal. Little ships throng the waters here. The crew go wistful. They swap old stories of sunlit sea. We draw near to the Cumaean Canal, the way to the surface. Cumaean Canal staging area. Here, the dark waters run down from the surface, from a brighter sea. The canal ascends through locks and gates and shadowed turns to the sunlight of the surface. Um, so I'm going to start by fulfilling my admiralty commission. Row out and meet a contact at the foot of the Albertine Gates. The password is the Empire Remembers. That's so fucking pretentious. In the shadow of the gates, a deeply tanned vagabond waits in a jolly boat. His clothes are ragged and his face is filthy, but his voice and manners are educated. His message is a string of numbers and the names of seven towns in, Ex in Essex, Shropshire, Cumbria. He insists that you repeat it back to him three times. He will not allow you to commit it to paper. And we'll gather a port report. Many ships pass this way, but perhaps you'll pick up something they missed. Business as usual. The gates open and shut. The locks remain free from sabotage. If anywhere besides London is safe in all the Untersee, it's here. The surface nations have an interest in keeping the way open. Um, nothing I want to buy. Straight down south once again. Sizzling vapors rise from the sea. Time slips sideways. A coil of rope has stung a stoker, and his fellows beat it to death. We are under the hand of the Iron Republic. I'd rather not fight a dreadnought right now. That sounds like a bad idea. No, damn it. Come on. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm going to get hit by that when I leave here. We'll find out, I suppose. I probably will. Okay. Iron Republic. Hell's client state. Be wary. Their laws are not the laws of man or nature. Factory engines roar like false lions. Blood thunders in the dock pipes. Crimson lightning skitters across the deck, leaps to the rail, curls there like a cat. 
The city is reflected in glassy, calm harbor water. The citizens there have the heads of dogs and serpents. Hell has brought freedom to the Iron Republic, freedom from all laws, even those of nature. Um, we'll start by compiling a port report. It won't be entirely straightforward. The streets won't lie straight, and the ink freezes whenever you look away from the inkwell. New passions. This is, the sensations of the Republic are overwhelming. This is a desire for years. That is a hatred for fountains. Here is an emotion that can only be expressed mathematically. Now you are awash with a nostalgia for the hatching of the egg. Write it down. Write it all down. Perhaps you'll be rid of it. Um... I do want to buy some fuel. Uh, let's see if... I'll try. Market of Hungers, the Cavalry, doct Cavalry Doctrine. On days such as this, the market is filled with crucified dragons and laws in waiting. They whistle a welcome. Um, okay. I don't... I guess I do want a sack of coffee beans to talk to one of my officers, right? Yeah, she wants just one sack of coffee beans. Okay. One of these, and then a full cargo of fuel. And then I will try to speak to you. Invite her to dine with you. Captain's cabin, is it? All right. But I want a coffee sorbet for dessert. What? I like coffee sorbet. No, sor no sorbet, no dinner. Excuse me, someone's caught fire again. A pleasant evening. Yes, I was in the Navy. Did you think I'd stolen the uniform? I retired before they threw me out. She grins and spoons more sorbet on her plate. I'm older than I look. We're all older than we look to you people. Um. Okay, what else does she want? More coffee beans. Tough challenge. Let's try once. Um, but I think only the once. We failed. A closely fought battle. You're strong, but she's stronger. She grins. I'll be old soon, but not yet. You spend a pleasant evening reminiscing and swapping tales. Oh, invite her to dine with you again. I've got an idea, she says, sorbet and arm wrestling. There we go. Now I won't uh, misunderstand. Okay. Anyways, you spend a pleasant evening reminiscing and swapping tales. You learn a little about the Elder Continent, its sleeping forests, speaking tigers, mountain pilgrims. We failed, um, but we are now acquaintances with her. Okay. Um... With that, I think I'm gonna, I cannot buy supplies here. So I think I'm just gonna buy back up to a full uh, hull of fuel or a full hold of fuel. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't super want to fight this person. I think that would be dumb given how much higher their hit points are than mine. So I'm kind of hoping that if I just, yeah, they do 14 damage to me. I'm kind of hoping that if I just run, they won't, um, kill me. Their lights are definitely keeping up with me more than I would like them to. Okay, maybe I'm fine now. Um, that was fun. Discovered Corkery Bay. Oh yeah, these guys. The Dawn Machine. Discovered Runeshmi Port and gained a secret. Uh, I might as well use that secret right now. What do I want to increase? Um, looks like hearts. I did lose a couple of hearts while I was in, uh, the place with the things. 
Hell, the Iron Republic. Just now, like 10 seconds ago, not 10 seconds ago. Oh yeah, there's big spikes down here. Let me see. Hmm, I'm missing places. I don't remember where exactly I have to go to get everything mapped. Oh, recurring nightmares. How oh, is the vast eye again? Okay, you've begun to dream of a vast eye. It knows you. You cannot evade its gaze. A black, unsleeping taste. Again and again, you are alone on the wide black Z. The eye is aware. Great. And the shiny guys who will probably kill me. I really want to try to go past the dawn machine sometime, but I'm doing so well with this character. It seems like a waste of them. You know? The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun. Ah, the sun. This is indeed how I feel in the springtime. Okay. Did I get another secret? Why is this yellow? No. Okay. Carnelian coast. Far to the south, the neath roof glimmer far to the south, the neath roof glimmers above the mountain of light. More secrets. See, this is the nice part of exploring new parts of the map is to get a bunch of secrets. Let's see if I can sight this guy really quickly and then run away. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, good. Port Carnelian, fallen London's sole imperial possession. Treasure it. London's first Unterzee col colony sweats under a blanket of southern heat. To the right of the dock, the sapphire mines yawn. To the left, the governor's house stands, prim as an Elderwick mansion. Behind lays the fungal jungle, ghostly in white and violet. All right, we have a bunch of things that we could do. Um, let's start with call at Hearts Cross house where the governor administers this distant fleck of her majesty's empire a port report the governor is very very busy an attache offers you a bowl of sugared puffballs and explains the work the governor does among the natives got to keep them happy what after all they are tigers um, and then, let's pan for sapphires in the fungal jungle. Somewhere in its heart runs a river of shining stones. 40% chance of success. We failed. A native ambush. Perhaps ambush is a strong word, but there's a tiger sitting on a broad mushroom cap, asking unquestioning, or sorry, asking unflattering questions about your nutritional value. You retreat. Um, let me see if she might be from here. It doesn't look like I got anything special. Okay. Um, I do have this secret to spend, though, which I think is once again going to be a hearts thing. Okay. 
Um, let's check on shops. It is not super interesting to me to buy any of these right now. Um, so I think that will be it here. Run away before that spots me again, because, woof, rather not be spotted by it. Librarian's Grotto. That sounds like a fun sort of place to go. I mean, it is all mushrooms, so, like, who knows, but... And we're getting more and more trees as we come up to the next port. I don't remember what the names of all of the ports are here, so this is uh, as much of a surprise to me as it is to any of you who haven't played this game before. The Crying Heights, where the Blue Prophets call the names of those about to die. Brilliant. Love that. The killing wax wind blows from the south. Engines labor, sailors cry out and fail. Which is this big old sandstorm that's there like basically all the time. Those are the blue prophets, by the way. Interesting down here. But we did find Port Addy, um, which is uh, somewhere, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't see me. I mean, you do obviously see me, but like, what if you didn't, though? Great, I'm stuck. Shit. Oh, sorry for that noise. That was bad. I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Ugh. Is this Port Addy? No, this is Apis Meat. Apis Meat? Apiary, so probably Apis Meat. Adam's Way. On a bed of monumental ruins, warehouses and way stations of shroom timber rise. Near Adam's Way. All ships that approach. that approach. fuck. All ships that approach Adam's Way are intercepted by the Gracious, the Presbyterians' splendidly headdressed coast guards. A quaint but invaluable tradition governs entry. You must tell them one of three stories. Uh, in return, you will be permitted to spend a single day in the port. Why are foreigners only allowed to spend a single day in Adam's Way? For your own protection, one of them explains kindly. Unsafe. The soil of the Elder Continent is dangerous to incomers, they claim. Those who linger can contract unfortunate conditions. Hysteria, rapture, and nuisance. And the rumors that the Presbyterian law offers no protection to foreigners after dark? Well, and the rumors that Presbyterian law offers no protection to foreigners after dark? Errant nonsense. I guess the only thing that we can tell them is... 
a tale of a city recently fallen. The gracious are always eager for news from London. A new day. Is their interest strategic, or do they just really enjoy hearing about London's miseries? Regardless, they permit you to dock. The day has just begun. In the town square, a yellow-robed priestess plants a seed in a bed of black soil. No sooner has she patted down the soil than a tiny shoot pokes forth. By mid-morning, it will be a sapling. By lunchtime, a budding tree. By evening's end, it will wither and fall. You must be back on your ship before then. The tree of a single day is a hopeful sapling, green and budding. It is planted in the morning, grows tall by lunch, buds in the afternoon, and withers in the evening. Foreigners must return to their ships before it falls. Uh, to the south, the Elder Continent, and the 72 cornucopian kingdoms of the Presbyterate. Are the stories true? Rivers of honey? Castles of ivory? Who can say? Foreigners that's you, are forbidden from the interior. The closest most get is Adam's Way, a shouting, feasting, thieving riot of a port. The options available may change as the day progresses. Um, okay, so we have some options here. We can visit an exhibition of Presbyterian curiosities um, for a single echo. We can assist at an amnesence hospital. We can listen to a storyteller. Um, we can get, or we can't, get a commission from an avuncular uh, broker. Or we can sit by the tree of a single day and let the hours pass. Um, I'm going to start by doing this. I just want to see what it's like. The day is young, and the tree is still only a sapling. Morning. It's not tall enough to offer shelter yet. You watch it grow inch by hasty inch and listen to its roots slide beneath the paved slabs of the square. Uh, we've lost a terror, and the tree of a single day is tall and strong. Its branches stretch over the rooftops. Um, it is now two out of four um i think i'm going to listen to a storyteller because i suspect that Ooh. catch a nut that falls from the tree of a single day uh picking them from a branch is forbidden but fallen ones are useless you'll need to intercept it between bow and ground it's a matter of luck fruitless the branch is too far the nut too small and your hand too slow when it strikes the paved square the nut bursts into brief pointless life thread-like squ shoots squirm out groping for water desperate roots crawl at a crack in the stone it's no good its strength spent the shoot browns stiffens and expires we now have two of the seven lamentable relics that we need for the venturer um I'm going to try, yes, I'm going to try one more time. Mm, I'm going to listen to a storyteller. I'm a little bit, you know, this is not going to disappear because it says no more than four. Um, so I'm going to do this again. Ooh, yes, one in the hand. An hour you wait, and another hour. In that time, nuts fall beyond your reach. You ignore them. Clack, clack, clack. There, a nut has fallen from a high limb. It ricochets from branch to branch as it falls. Your hand snaps out. The nut lands in your palm, glossy, smooth, and brown. A number of passers-by cheer your catch. We have gained one outlandish artifact. Um... The tree of a single day is withered. Its gnarled trunk groans. Um, and now I'm going to try and get a port report. Uh, hopefully this is how I get it. Uh, listen to a storyteller. Ignore the gaudy entertainments intended to defraud visitors. Pass the street hawkers. They will only tell you what you want to hear. Shun the tavern gossip, most of which is fabricated by the myth Mithridate office, the Prester's propagandists. The buzzing of the bees. Climb the stairs, 
climb the stairs cut into the hill. Sit at the foot of the bee-capped stone columns. They will shield you from the southern mountain heat. Be quiet. Listen. Old storytellers share the shadow. The prester is on the verge of declaring the dawn machine a blasphemy. L London's bureaucracy is riddled with the children of the thief of faces. An expedition of foreigners recently put to shore to the west, then went south in search of the garden. They were discovered and given to the Red River. We now have one port report, and the tree of a single day cracks and leans. It's time to return to your ship. Um, looks like our, uh, thing that we can do is return to your ship. The day is over. It's time to return to your ship. Back to Z. The gracious comb the streets, ushering visitors politely back to the dock. Um, and I don't have anything else to tell them, so I can't go back to Adam's way. I am going to see if this is where the Presbyterian adventures would be from, but it doesn't look like she has anything special. But I do have another secret. Um, veils or hearts? I'm going to go with veils. Wait, I could have just gone up there. Oh, well. Veils guy, please give me veils. Thank you, veils guy. Um, with that, let's... Whoop. Pressed E too many times. Let's head on out. Farther to the east. Turn my lights off because that thing scared me a little bit. I am not strong enough to be fighting the things down here, I don't feel. I believe if I go far enough here, my boat starts burning. Only living ships may dare Adam's way and survive, yet my boat starts burning. Your hole shudders and crackles as the water grips it. Great. Living ships. That might require me to get the Clattery Heart, which I think is DLC that I haven't paid for. I know I haven't paid for any DLC for this game. Um... And I think that the Clattery Heart is DLC. But, you know, I started a new job recently. Maybe I will be willing to uh, pay for DLC. You don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me. Do not see me. That is a command. Okay. How far over am I? Oh, I'm most of the way over. Okay. There's an island up here. I'm not sure how far I want to go before I start heading back, because I've used up, like, more than half of my fuel, but I also, like, did a couple of, um, go fasts. I might go to the city and then not go to the King Eater thing. I think I'll turn my lights off. And then I'll head back to London. Varchas. Varchas? Probably Varchas. Varchas, the mirrored city where light was always the law. The walled city of Varchas is a, is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers, slow blooming around moldering stone. Uh, quincunts, quin, quincunts of carved stepped towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough, shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varchas. Two towering carved stone lamps throw their light on the angled mirrors, and a blue-cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree-hushed, sprawling darkness Whoa. The city is a beacon against the tree-hushed, sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent, and the far distance of vast mountain glimmers. Um, so we can choke on the smell. 
Um, let's just go in order. Choke on the smell. It is overpowering, sweet. It comes from the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have waxy, have white waxy leaves which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality, and the smell, perfume worn too many days on the body, unread books left to turn to ink-stained pulp, a garden drowned and rotting in still water. Oh, my shoulder just popped. The Zaylers wave you over. They are sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirrored chips and stylized snakes made of bone. You're not thinking of going in there. The Zaylers gawk at you in unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of Varchos, which they no doubt invented a whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varchosi render Zaylers into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that the blind that they blind any strangers strangers who dare to gaze too long upon their city's secrets. We're just waiting to be paid and then we're off, one of the Zaylor says, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. Um, ask the guard a few questions. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters, or cities as the case may be. The blue-cloaked guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness of the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard stands in the middle of the pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns runs along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Tamas, she asks, are you going to ask her questions, or are you just going to stare? Her tone is brusque, but her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varchas receives many visitors. Um... I'm just, again, going to take this all in order. Your name is not Tamas. You correct her politely. The guard looks scandalized and tries to stop her, her ears. All those who are not Varchasi are Tamas. You have been touched by darkness, and it has taken your name. She fixes you with a demolishing look and adds, It is very ill-mannered to pretend you still have one. You begin to see a little why Varchas is not often visited. It looks like you will have to get used to be calling Tamas if you wish to enter. Ask about the light. It all seems a bit wasteful, possibly even ostentatious. We must always walk in Mihir's light, so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city, she tells you proudly. If we let darkness corrupt, we would not be Varchasi any longer, but Tamas, like you. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you even before her words do. Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Thomas. Before you ask, she adds, No, I do not have any de desire to leave Varchas. The rest of the Neath has fallen for me here's grace, and I have no wish to join them. Ask about her. Does she like her job? Does anyone? It is a great honor to guard the mirrored gate, she, sh she snaps defensively. She gestures to the edge of the pool of light illuminating her posts. It is very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall into the dark. Her voice goes thready. I would be banished from Mihir's grace. I would lose my name. That is why they only send the bravest outside the walls. Um, ask about the city's customs. Best to know before you flout them. Easier to plan an escape route that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors, she says, her voice hard, and try very hard not to dream. You, were you expecting something along the lines of don't murder anyone, or only wear red on special occasions? Still, you nod and smile. And you have no more questions. You are satisfied. Or perhaps the guard's voice is beginning to grate a little. She looks a little disappointed, but does not try to engage you further. Um, water. I'm going to compile a port report and then say I wish to enter. The Admiralty will want to know. 
the mirrored city and his glories. Tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. You don't want to inspire. I'm really struggling with talking today. You don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. Okay, and finally, tell the guard you wish to enter. Well, what else are the gates for if not to go through? She makes a mark in her ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates rearrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow Shadow to touch the guard. Our ways are not yours, Tamas. Remember that, and walk in the light of me here. An occurrence, your Vartos, the mirrored city quality is now one. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take, so I'm actually going to end this episode here, and I will see you all very shortly. Um, thank you for watching Salt Place on the Sea, episode 19.